We'll record this for well, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Evan Steen. I'm a director of the graduate programs focused on sustainability at Bar College in New York. Um, and along with my colleague David Blockstein, I am also one of the co-leads of the worldwide teach-in on climate justice. Um, and uh we are tonight uh, joined by uh, folks from Right the World, um, and I love the double entendre there, which I just figured out earlier today. Um, it's about creating right in the world, um, uh, who will talk with us about, um, about the power of writing um, and the importance of writing um, to, um, as, as, a, as a fundamental climate solution. Um, we are a small group tonight, but we are recording um, for others who would like to hear this presentation. Um, and tonight, what I will do is uh, tell you a little bit about the worldwide teach-in on climate and justice, um, and then uh, David will introduce our speakers, and then we will uh, have a good conversation, um, I hope, about uh, writing as a, as a tool. Um, so uh, for this audience, I, I don't think there's any need to explain why we're here. Um, uh, we got our first snowfall of the year here in New York State um, yesterday, so it's lovely here, but we've missed it. Um, and uh, just to kind of remind ourselves of where we're at, um, next year is likely to take us into an El Nino, um, which means it's very likely we will break uh, the global temperature record um, and could possibly push above 1.5 degrees C. That is actually within the realm of possibility next year, um, not as a permanent feature of the planet, but uh, as, a, as an experience of what might come. So we know it's a somber time um, for the species um, and for all species, and um, I think there's a lot of work to do. And so the, the thesis behind the worldwide teach-in is it's a stronger together thesis, right? I mean, we're all engaged in climate education, and we believe that by uh, calling for a worldwide uh, day of, of climate education uh, this year on or around March 29th, um, that it's a chance for climate educators around the world to just step up their game um, and engage more people um, than they otherwise would. Um, but there's also kind of a deeper uh, strategy here, theory of change. And that is that on every college, university, high school, middle school, grade school campus these days, um, you know, 60, 70, 90% of the teachers are, are growing deeply climate concerned. Um, as individuals. These are not climate experts, but they're just people who are worried about their own future and the future of their children and their students. And uh, part of the goal of this project is to try and mobilize those uh, climate concerned, but so far on the sidelines educators and provide them the tools uh, to speak uh, from the perspective of their subject and their discipline um, about uh, how their disciplines are contributing to climate solutions. Um, so uh, in addition to a call for all campus events um, this uh, spring, we're also, um, and kind of piloting this, we're actually asking individual teachers all around the world to hashtag make climate a class. Um, and that means take a half an hour out of whatever you're teaching, whether it's general chemistry or European history or geometry, um, and just pause um, and say, we're going to make climate a class for the next half an hour and talk about how mathematicians or historians or chemists have a role to play in climate solutions. Uh, with the idea that we can then engage our students in thinking about, you know, I like economics, I could be a climate economist, or I like psychology, I could bring my psychology skills to bear, you know, helping other people get out of their climate depression and their climate despair. Um, so, or I'm, a, or I'm a musician, you know, and I could write a climate ballad, which needs to be written. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, the idea here is that it has to be a generational thing. This is not a solution set that's going to come from experts. And we need to uh, empower everyone to, to really move from climate despair to climate repair. So that is kind of the theory of change underlying this work. Um, and let me just briefly share with you the tools that we've created on our website. Um, so uh, this is our website. It's just worldwideteachin.org. Um, and uh, if you go down here, there's a one minute video that is an explainer. I'll just play it quickly. 
Your role, like Bichang, will mobilize the power of educators and students and empower a generation of fighting to stabilize the climate and advance climate justice. We all get comfortable talking about climate all the time. The teaching helps us do that. The World Wide Tip In is a call to organize events on campus or community on or around March 29th, 2023. The key to successful teaching is relying on homegrown talent, not outside experts. The more local educators you involve directly from your school or community, the more people will attend the event. They will do this gladly because they are really worried about a climate change, just like you. Our team is here to support you, but you have to step forward. Join us. So we are here tonight. Your world like you change. We are here tonight and we will be here uh, every week, uh, every Monday at 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. New York time um, for the rest of the month. So if you have any colleagues, other climate educators that hasn't heard about this project, please urge them to attend one of our sessions, um, learn about the project, join it. Um, and um, it's not too late, right? Because actually you can do a teaching as late as May 1st. You know, certainly all of April is, is a fine time to join the project. Doesn't have to be on March 29th. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, the more people we get participating, you know, the more power we're going to have this year and the more power we're going to have next year. So uh, uh, the number one thing, the number two thing you can do uh, is actually tell other people about this event um, and get them engaged. I'll tell you the number one thing in a minute. Um, but uh, uh, you can, uh, under it says click here for the 10 minute version of this video. So we have a much longer version of the video that talks about different strategies and ideas of what you can do for a teach-in. Um, and if you go to our models page on the website, a lot of detail about those options, um, uh, different ideas. Here's the make climate a class idea. We've got a three hour teach-in, a K-8 faith groups. We also have one this year, climate theater. So on the theme of writing, we actually sponsored a climate play writing contest this year. We have uh, we had 40 submissions. We picked the uh, three very good ones. They're five minute long, seven minute long plays. So you can have a campus theater group can put those plays on and then have discussion following, or you can just do a play reading. It's very simple to bring a group of people together, to just read those plays and think through what the meaning of uh uh, of this kind of art is for helping us think through the challenges that we face. Um, so lots of options, lots of ways to get involved. But once again, um, at this stage, you know, it doesn't have to be an event with 100 people. It can be an event with 20 people or 15 people. Um, but the important thing from our perspective is to do something um, and pledge to do something and get it on the map. So right here is a event button and this is the most important thing you can do right now is um, if you haven't already and you're in for example Australia um, then we need to get some flags on the map and we need to have participation um, and it can be virtual as well it doesn't have to be in person so you could host a webinar or a training or a workshop um, but what you need to do is go to the register an event button on the map have your you know little event will then pop up or your big event will pop up um, and um, people can find you. Um, and part of this is just you know recognizing we're not alone, that um, uh, we all need to be, you know there are, there are millions of other people around the world who uh, care deeply about climate change and Australia wasn't even showing, but it's a blank map right now. It's very sad. Um, we need some Australian participation. So no pressure. Um, actually, lots of pressure. Um, so uh, that uh, is is really the most important thing. We need to, in the next month or two months, we need to get out 100 bubbles on this map. And if you click on one of them, for example, that one here in Brazil, it, there'll be detail. So this is something, uh, It's an, I love the, the translation of teaching, an encontro participativo, pela justica climatica, so that is a, 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 a educational me uh, no a participatory meeting is the way I would translate in in um, Portuguese. 
Um, and you can see there's there's space for details. They're not there yet, but you can edit these and put more detail in as your event gets closer. Um, so that is uh, what we do. Um, we are going to be around this year. We are going to be around uh, bigger um, and bolder in 2024. So uh, please, you know, be involved this March and then uh, really take the time to think of something really big for uh, for for um, early April 2024, because um, it's going to be a hot year. Um, that seems to be in the cards. Um, and with that, uh, any questions um, before we get into our, our discussion? About the teaching and the model. Hello, Chi. Haven't seen you in a while. Nice to be with you. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Nice. Hello, Ethan. Hello, David. Chi is calling from Sun Yat-sen University in Taiwan. Yes. <laughs> um, it's uh, fine. She's an English literature professor there. Um, okay, so uh, hearing none, um, David, we'll turn it over to you. Great. Well, th thank you all for for joining us. Um, we we do have a a presentation, but I thought maybe we could just go really quickly and just have people um, introduce their name and and their uh, institution and their location. And I'm especially, in, and, and Hong, I'm really interested in what this building is behind you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hong Yang. Uh, I'm a, a earth scientist a professor at Bryant University here. So behind me is our uh, academic innovation center. Uh, I'm spending, currently I'm spending a year at Harvard as a Red Club fellow, working on a project uh, regarding to the climate change education. Perfect. Well, welcome. And David? Yes, David Weinstein. I'm the founder and CEO of Write the World. I'm here with a few of my colleagues tonight, and I'm located right now in Boston, Massachusetts. Great. Well, we're delighted to have you with, with us, and I'm delighted that uh, one third of the participants are, are STEAM, <laughs> so uh, you know, we're, we're, you're in good company here. And, and Claire and, and Liza will introduce you in a moment. So, Nicole? Larry, I'm actually a high school teacher um, in Michigan, um, and I'm interested in tonight because I actually have a class that is around um, global studies and social action, um, and climate change is one of the things that we look at with our students. So um, I'm excited to be here. Great. Thank you. And Chi, you've been introduced, but do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Um, it, um, I'm calling, it's Ji Ling. My name is Ji Ling and I'm calling from uh, Kaohsiung in the south part of Taiwan, National Sun Yat-sen University. It's my third season to organize this very meaningful and exciting event and looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> Great, well, thank you. And uh, Dorit. I'm Dorit Arthur. I'm at University of California, Santa Cruz. I thought you might need a visual aid that was better than my cluttered living room. So um, there it is. We're, I guess we're looking out at us toward Australia that way. Um, so anyway, and I teach writing and uh, climate communications course. So I'm particularly interested in classroom um, activities that, that can really engage the students. Great. Well, well, uh, we're we're delighted to have uh, each and all of you with us. So, um, this is going to be a, an actual um, workshop where we're going to get an opportunity to do some uh, writing ourselves. And so, we had a, a little an earlier session today with with just one presenter, um, Liza Cochran, who I've been uh, working with for about half a year now. And um, Liza is a senior product manager for the student experience at uh, Write the World and has been um, very engaged in, in helping us to uh, connect with, with uh, this great organization that I wasn't aware of until about six months ago. And then um, Claire McFadden, who is education director um, for Write the World and uh, coming to us uh, from tomorrow morning from uh, Brisbane, Australia. I, I guess that she eats tomorrow morning um, for, for you as well. So well, let's turn it to Liza and Claire and I'm 
looking forward to participating. Thank you so much, David and, and Eben. And um, yes, Claire is visiting us from the future. <laughs> I'll get us started tonight and then pass it over to, to Claire in a little bit. Um, it's it's so wonderful to be here and it's actually lovely to have a smaller group because we get to hear more from all of you. And um, you know, this morning we didn't even, it was a little bit bigger and we did not get to even go around and kind of introduce ourselves and hear where everyone was from. So it's just really exciting to um, be with all of you and, and hear a bit about your work and, and where you're where you're calling in from this evening. Um, on behalf of, of all of us at Write the World, um, including David and Claire and, and the rest of the team, um, we're thrilled to participate in the teach-in and to also have this opportunity today and tonight to share some ideas with you all on how writing can foster meaningful climate engagement among our, our students and communities. Um, so let's see, let me go ahead and share my screen. Oh, I think I need to be given permission to share my screen. Even is working on it. Okay. And while Even's doing that, if uh, the person who's calling in from area code 203 would like to introduce themselves, uh, this would be a good time to do that. And the person who's calling in, and if it doesn't work to join via audio, but you can um, participate in the chat, you can always introduce yourself that way as well. Okay, Eben, I think I'm good to go. Thank All you. Right. Great. Okay, perfect. So this webinar, as, as David mentioned, is designed as a mini workshop. We're hoping to offer some hands-on understanding of what your students might experience when writing about climate change. So the content of, of what we'll cover today is designed with educators in mind, but the idea is to really put you in your students' shoes, um, experiencing how the writing process can change the way that you relate to this crisis in, in some shape or form. And before we dive in, I'd love for you to take a moment to reflect on this quote from one of the, the lead authors of the latest IPCC report, Joelle Gerges. Uh, she said in her book, Humanity's Moment, which um, highly recommend, oh, and she is also Australian. Uh, she said, we need artists, writers, poets, and filmmakers. They can dismantle the walls of numbness. And she is, of course, speaking about the power of writing to influence its readers. Um, but what we'll actually focus on tonight is the power of writing to, to dismantle the walls of numbness within the writer, within ourselves as writers, and the engagement and action that is ignited as a result. Um, and so I'm going to very briefly stop sharing my screen and pop a question in the chat that um, I'd love for you to respond to. So the first question is, what are your first thoughts when you hear the term climate writing? How would you define this term? And I'm only going to give you 30 seconds. We have a lot to get through. So just jot down whatever comes to mind first, put it in the chat. What comes to mind when you hear the term climate writing? How would you define that for yourself? Should we just uh, speak or? You can put it, You can, um, oh. if you can put it in the chat, great. And if not, then we'd love you. Yes, please speak. We would love to hear <laughs> ideas in all shape and form. My, my first reaction is writing to who? Great. Yeah, absolutely. Who's the audience? Yeah, excellent. Yeah, so I'm seeing journal articles, LOL, CliFi, expressing both hopes and fears of the imminent future. Nonfiction, typically, but creative writing as well. Great. Yes, this is quite the, the spread here. And then my next question for you, which I'll also put in the chat here so you can see it, is what is your own relationship to climate writing? Um, you know, the, you, you, we, in just this small group of people, we probably run the gamut of, you know, everything from people who publish climate writing professionally to people who design curriculum. Um, and write lesson plans having to do with climate change, um, maybe people who dabble in, in climate change poetry um, or who write advocacy letters, or maybe this is not something that, that you engage in or partake in in any shape or form, and that is okay too. Um, so feel free, great. So lesson plans, publishing climate research data. Great, technical and advocacy. 
Excellent. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, so yes, so this is such a great mix of responses, even among this very small group. And I want you to know up front that, um, and the reason I'm I ask you this question is that to um, you know, I just want to say in a very <laughs> straightforward way that to engage in climate writing requires zero prior experience. You do not need to be an expert in the science of climate change or a professional author. Um, to write about it in a meaningful way and to have it be a valuable experience for you. Um, and that is something too that I think is 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 important to communicate um, to to our students. So kind of, you know, beginning the process in a way that makes it feel as as undaunting as possible. To give you a roadmap of where we're going in our half an hour or so together, I'll give you a quick overview of Write the World, including our teach an event and climate writing initiative. Actually, I'll hand it over to Claire to, to, do, to do that. And we'll look at younger generations call to action for us educators, and then look at some examples of writing's power to engage students in climate action. And then we'll step into the shoes of our students for um, a mini activity or mini writing activity, and then have some time at the end for sharing about that experience of, of, of being a student, of being in the shoes of our students, as well as considering transference and next steps. And with that, I'll pass it over to Claire. Thanks, Liza. So I'm just going to give you all a very precede version today of what Write the World is and what we do. So we're a, a free global platform for young writers aged 13 to 19 all around the world. We have over 100 countries represented on Write the World with, I guess, an underpinning idea of the site being that in order to write and in order, order to improve as a writer, you must be writing within a community. So that is really one of the tenets of our site, this idea of writing as a social activity uh, and so a lot of the activities and programs we have for young writers on the site are rooted in that idea. So we have prompts that the students can respond to, monthly competitions, workshops with which are online or even asynchronous workshops um, that students can be involved in. We place a, a great deal of importance on the idea of peer review. So sharing your drafts with the world and getting feedback from your peers um, and more. And of course, teachers can use Write the World in the classroom too. There's groups available for educators so you can effectively run your microcosm of the site to your needs in the classroom. Um, this is really just touching on this today. What I will do is I'll put my email in the chat. I, would love to talk to all of you more about Write the World should you wish to find out more um, for your students or otherwise. So um, please do contact me. Um, we'll go on to the next slide. And this is, again, a very brief summary of our teaching event that we're going to be having at the end of this month into early April. So as we were looking at at the start of the call here today, we will be hosting one of the teaching events for, um, for the session. And this is this, it's quite adaptable in terms of how you'd, you can use this with your students. So we'll be offering three writing prompts, all focused around climate writing, poetry, flash fiction, and advocacy letter writing, all free to submit entries There'll be one award for each of those categories and um, prize money is available too. We have the young climate activist, Alexandria Villasenor will be our guest judge who's done so much work in this space. And for all of these prompts, we have lesson plans and standard alignments associated. So really for teachers, you can use this in your classroom in as small a way or as more comprehensive a way as you'd like to. Anything from having your students write a poem to creating a whole 
unit around this work, there's certainly the resources to support you there. And we'll be sending out that information to everyone on this call after uh, the session today. Um, so what we have looked at now, it's, it's been really interesting for Liza and myself to be part of Write the World. We've both been at Write the World for almost 10 years now. And like all of us, we've seen these last 10 years as being so critical in terms of the climate fight and maybe not so much the fight for the climate, but the engagement and the way that young people over that time have really come to the forefront and have taken a lead as this kind of cohesive active voice for the fight um, against climate change. So for 10 years now, we've been framing a lot of our work that we do on the site around climate change. And this idea, this concept that writing about climate change is a key social tipping intervention. So that through our curriculum and programming, we can position the climate crises as relevant to all facets of a young person's future. And this idea that by holding this space for writing in this way can be a critical component for social transformation. And to, to really, to go somewhere in terms of altering the norms and values around climate change. And that, as we'll see um, further on in the presentation, um, we see that impact for students who've, who've graduated many years um, from, from Write the World, how there's still, still that idea has been crystallized in them from their time on our platform. Um, so there's many ways we do this through prompts, competitions, um, climate and environmental workshops. I think maybe most importantly, as I talked about, about the, this key tenant of Write the World being the community, I think for young people around the world to know that they're not alone in this fight. I, I, was, I was thinking just at the start of this call to see, to see you all here and to, to join from um, Taiwan and the US and all the other parts of the world that we're, we're coming um, with this collective vision, it's inspiring. And I think this is what the young writers see every day is the fact that they're not alone in the fight against climate change. There's young people all over the world who feel as passionately as they are. And that's really helps with the momentum. And what we all know now is that young people want to engage with the subject of climate change and they want us to engage with them. A sense of anxiety and distress is felt acutely by younger generations. Uh, and I think there used to be this hesitancy and, and we had some of it too in our early years at Write the World um, where there's some hesitancy or trepidation about bringing a topic as overwhelming as climate change to the consciousness, to the forefront of the minds of our students. But what's become clear is that by engaging with climate change in our classrooms and education, uh, educational communities, we are overwhelmingly meeting teens where they're already at. You can see this reflected in, in study after study. Um, this one surveyed 10,000 young people around the world um, about how they feel about climate change as well as, as, as their perception of, of their government's response to it. And what's also become clear is that when we as adults and educators fail to, to meet students where they're at, there's this double damage that happens. So there's the distress that young people are feeling about climate change um, itself. And then there's the distress caused by that feeling of disjunction uh, between what they feel acutely and the level of response or acknowledgement that they're seeing reflected back to them from adults. Um, there's the, the, the now famous Greta Thunberg quote from her Davos speech where, um, where she uh, talked about, you know, the feeling of, of, of the house burning down. Um, another very stirring articulation of this dynamic comes from the youth climate activist Shia Bastida, and she wrote, it feels like we're rooted in awareness while the adults around us live in obliviousness. Nothing changes when we stay in a state of unbotheredness. So the question for us then is how can we as educators support young people in what they're already inclined to do, which is to care deeply about this crisis. 
And what we've seen at Write the World is that writing about climate change has the power to really endow young people with a sense of agency uh, at the same time that it fosters this, um, you know, both a sense of action and, and a sense of hope. And so it aligns their inner experience with the outer world and frames the changing climate as a crisis we have agency to address. And then perhaps most importantly, and this goes back to that sense of community that Claire was speaking about, uh, it fosters a connection and a community which allows for that sustained engagement rather than feelings of hopelessness to take hold. Mm -hmm. And we at Write the World, um, especially now that you know we've grown over these years, we have the pri privilege of doing this through exposure. So we are reflecting the importance of the student voice and experience back to them by broadcasting their writing out into the world. Poetry and essays about climate change by, by our young writers have been um, featured by the New Yorker and Public Radio International, uh, featured in the book that we published on climate change that Elizabeth Colbert blurbed, guest judged and commented on Bill McKibb by, uh, commented on by Bill McKibben and Jamie Margolin. So all of this is really a way to validate those perspectives of young people and their voice. But writing in any community, large or small, has the power to connect writers to the issue while also connecting them to each other. And I think that Smaller communities often do that uh, in some ways even better because there is that sense of intimacy that comes with a, a smaller group. As uh, Amitav Ghosh, Ghosh reminds us in his book, a sense of connection and community and collective action is exactly what we, what we need right now. So this is intrinsically valuable, but also from there, from that sense of connection, uh, other forms of engagement can transpire. So writing is how we establish this pathway to action. So from connection comes motivation. Motivation turns into agency. Agency becomes hope. And hope cements itself as continued engagement. So the this is an example, uh, this quote below, um, of how students who've been a part of Write the World can take this kind of connection that they've established on our platform and turn it into continued engagement with the issue many years after graduating from Write the World. So Vani Dadu was one of our alums from India and she had this to say, I will be studying engineering, but this experience makes me more sensitive towards climate change. I know that in the future, I will make an effort to study sustainability more deeply. I've realized that all these years of writing on Write the World has made me so much more receptive to new ideas and confident in my writing skills and even understand others through their writing. It's a privilege to write for an issue that affects us all. So I guess the question we have then is how do we form this connection, this connection that starts it all for someone like Vani and for young people everywhere and all of us. And the poet Jory Graham has this to say, it is one thing to understand what is happening and it is quite another to awaken to it. So through the work that we do on Write the World, we're looking at this this awakening to this idea and this awakening through a community. Some words on this slide from another young climate activist, Maria Rosenzweig, and she says, I'll sit myself down on the ground and really connect to my senses, especially breath. That will make you more aware of the world around you. And then the more that you're aware, the more you're going to care. The more you care, the more likely you are to do something about it. So this idea, I think, is reflected in so many cultures too. I think of my own experience in Australia and the First Nations people have an idea of what they call daddy, which is this idea of deep listening. I think this is certainly part of many First Nations cultures way of communicating and connecting to the land and so it's 
lovely to see that this is making full circle and coming around to some of the young climate activists. I think there's there's a way of being that we can all adopt uh, in this in this fight that sometimes seems um, could lead us to despair, but instead to to lead us back to this groundedness and connectedness with the earth. So. On the other side of the screen is a framework from the All We Can Save project. And I'll draw your attention to that because it represents how this critical interlocking relationship between courage, truth, and solution works. And this is where writing comes into the equation and how writing about these, these topics requires us to be courageous. So, I'm going to thank you in advance for bringing your courage here today to the webinar. And uh, we're going to now go into a, a little bit of a writing and uh, thinking activity. So if we think about, I'd just like you to take a moment, you can close your eyes if you like. Um, Think about a place that serves as a refuge for you in times of distress or uncertainty, somewhere in the natural world. This might be a place you go to physically or a place from your childhood, a place that you remember. So really try and ground yourself into that place. And when I think to the natural environments that are very meaningful to me, there's always a feeling about them and there's a way that you feel in that space. Try and bring that feeling to, to wherever you're sitting now, whether it's at your desk or at home. Can you feel the sun on your skin? What's the temperature like? Is it cool, humid? If you are to open your eyes in your mind's eye, what do you see? Is the sky blue, pink, gray? What are the trees like? What's the, the texture of the world around you? What can you see in the distance? And most importantly, what feeling does this place give you? And with that place in mind, now pick up a pen or pencil or feel free to type if you prefer and transport us there in just a couple sentences. Um, Try to pick two different senses, sight, smell, sound, taste, or touch. Focus on two of them and, and, and try to write one, one description, one sentence for each. And there's some examples there up on the screen as well. Perhaps it's the feeling of the desert wind that defines this place for you, or the sight of the shoreline, or a particular sound the smell of the forest stuff or sea salt, or maybe the absence of smell after a snowstorm. So really think what defines this place most for you from a sensory uh, perspective, and then choose two to describe. And take just one more minute to do this. <clears throat> And now we're going to take a few minutes to listen to how one person, the writer Terry Tempest Williams, writes about the Western U.S. landscape, uh, specifically Utah, where her family 
has lived for, for several generations. Williams is, um, in the segment we'll listen to, she's speaking with a reporter from the New York Times, Bianca Gaver, about the wildfires that devastated parts of the Western US in the early fall of 2020. We're going to listen to two very short sub segments. And the first one will jump in when Williams is talking about her current experience around Salt Lake, Utah, as the skies you have filled with smoke and ash. And then we'll move right from there into the second segment, a section in which Williams reads a passage she's written called An Obituary for the Land, which really is an obituary for the way that humans have, have been living and a rallying call for a changed way of living. So notice in these passages how closely her grief is aligned with a commitment, a real vow to fight for change and the relationship between grief and writing and then action. <clears throat> and, you know, I just went outside and all of the patio furniture is covered in ash. And, you know, you just think that ash, you know, those are trees, those are bodies, that's fur, that's feathers. It's, it's, it's everything. And it's, you know, we're covered in it. And anyone who says they're fine, they are dead to this world that is really dying. And, and grief, I feel like it's a raven on my shoulder. I, you know, I just walk with it every day. And that is the truth. Do you feel comfortable reading some of what you wrote today? Yes, I do. Put this down and get it. Okay. Bianca, what part do you want me to read? Um, maybe toward the end, where the part where you directly address the obituary. Okay. The obituary will be short. The time came and they died to the old ways of being, good riddance. It was time, a terminal disease, where humans put themselves at the center of the universe, and in so doing, have been dead to the world that is alive. To the power of these burning, illuminated Western lands who have shaped our character, inspired our souls, and restored our belief in what is beautiful and enduring, I will never write your obituary because even as you burn, you are throwing down seeds that will sprout and flower. Trees will grow and forests will rise again as living testaments to how one survives change. Let this be a humble tribute, an exaltation, an homage, an open-hearted eulogy to all we are losing to fire, to floods, to hurricanes and tornadoes and the invisible virus that has called us all home and brought us to our knees. We are not the only species that lives and loves and breathes on this planet called Earth. May we raise a fistful of ash to all the lives lost that it holds. Grief is love. How can we hold this grief without holding each other? I will mark my heart with an X made of ash that says, the power to restore life resides here. The future of our species will be decided here not by facts, but by love and loss. Let us cry every day like rain in the desert. And on my heart, I pledge of allegiance to the only home I will ever know. Thank you so much. So with <clears throat> Terry Tempest Williams' powerful words fresh in your mind, take the seeds of what you've already written and started to imagine when you visited that place of refuge in your mind and begin what we're calling the Pledge of Allegiance poem, whatever that means to you, uh, inspired by this, this quote from Tempest Williams, penned on my heart 
I pledge of allegiance to the only home I will ever know. And we just have, um, you know, just probably seven or so minutes to begin to begin this writing exercise. Um, so just start writing, no pressure to, uh, you know, to um, achieve any kind of sense of completion. Let this just be a beginning. Take one more minute. I know that that is not enough time, <laughs> but take one minute to find a, a stopping point for now.
So just to finish up here today, but we're certainly not um, finishing writing about climate change. So I'd encourage you if you feel like you've um, you're you're on to something with your writing to continue it. I always think as teachers, we never give ourselves well, we often don't have enough time to write. So I'd encourage you to uh, to continue with this. But just to wrap up the session today, we'd love to hear from you. Um, there's a few options as, as to what you might like to focus on for these last couple of minutes. You might choose to read a line from your piece of writing that you've just worked on, maybe to share a bit about what this writing process was like for you. Um, maybe you can share a little bit about what your thoughts were about the connection between climate change and writing at the start of this session and, and what they're like now, whether there's been any change there, or you might want to share something that you discovered. So we'd love to hand it over to you for your reflections. And Liza has just popped those particular pieces into the chat. Is there anyone, do, we, do I have a lovely volunteer? to begin or will I have to choose a lovely oh Hong thank you very much so uh in a short time I, I jot down a few things uh in the summary I, I jot down I said uh, at this time a solution at hand truth in the head and courage in the heart well that's very that's so beautiful we need to get that we need to get that on a bumper sticker or something that's a that's such a beautiful let me just write that down in the the chat is it truth in the head courage in the heart i just borrowed your three circles the three words oh, so yeah. Uh, yeah so i i, I wrote the uh, solution at hand so you, you you need to work on the solution right uh, uh truth in your head so uh, you need to learn and think about the truth and then eventually you got courage in your heart yep. I, I i love the, the way you have framed that and i'm just going to put that here for everyone thank you nicole what did you think um, i'll elect to share a line from my writing um, I pledge to you to find a way to clear you of the ills against you and those that call you home. We have polluted your soul with plastic, oil, and trash for far too long. I was right. I my pl place I went to was um, I I have a yearly and annually multi times I visit um, the Atlantic Ocean, a beach, and so I was that's where my mind went for for that. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's very beautiful. Thank you, Cole. And yeah, I hope some of these things will you'll be able to to use them with your students too. Yeah, I've I've done the taking them into like that sensory place. Um, yeah. but I love the idea of the Pledge of Allegiance after to that place. Um, we yeah. talked about a sense of place quite a bit in my class, and so this is a great kind of takeaway for that. So, yeah. Thanks, Nicole. Well, we'd love to. We'd always love to hear your um, students' work too. So um, yes, we, we use Write the World often. So <laughs> you're yeah, a great resource fun. for sure. Fantastic. Um, Chi, how about you? Um, yes, I would like to share a line, but uh, it's a little bit. It's about uh, it's about a kind of devastating events took place in 20, uh, 20, uh, 2009. Right, so, but we are still, okay, so the line goes, um, the entire village was wiped out uh, over a night of 462 of the, uh, the uh, beautiful local residents. And the mud flow, how could we cope with that? And then perhaps I could use the uh, sentence, the solution is in our hands over 13 years, and then choose ahead and courage in our heart yes oh, so you. it was a yes yeah, still after so, yeah, we built a memorial park or something uh but it was caused by the extreme weather so yes oh gosh yeah yeah and the landscapes is the beautiful landscape but it wouldn't take another hundred years to recover so yeah yeah 
you know, and just yeah. yeah, no, it's it, yeah, and I, I think yeah, to 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 remember these places through writing and and as you say, to sort of to use it as a reason for act to act. So thank yes, you, as a memory. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. I'm happy to share my writing. Thank you, David. What a lovely volunteer. So I wrote about my backyard, which is yeah. a very high rock ledge. Um, the solid rock ledge below my feet connects to Mother Earth. I pledge allegiance to maintain this sanctuary, this home to rabbits, chipmunks, flowers, and family, to see the next generation of little kids run over to the edge of the ledge and look out and wonder with optimism. Thank you, David. And I, you know, I, I think this is this is so important, this focus on even your own backyard and and even in scientific terms, the amount of carbon that you can store in a backyard, if everyone were to do that, is quite amazing. So I think I'm in David does have a very beautiful backyard. So I'm glad that you're tending to it. Um to read how about did I pronounce your name correctly yes you did amazingly I didn't volunteer <laughs> no, so that's okay. what I what you guys are amazing oh my god I'm like tears in my eyes so ironically I teach students to write you know all day long but I don't I don't I'm not creative so that's kind of why I'm here was to, and I do do this little thing with my students like the last two weeks of the quarter where we start talking about style blah blah blah. This is my backyard sort of this is um, UC Santa Cruz right towering redwoods everywhere so that's where I went, you know that was my happy space, but ironically I don't. I don't take my students out there and I should. So I think what I'm taking away from this session, besides do more with the creative end of things and use some of the prompts and read Terry Tempest Williams and go find out about Write the World, um, is that I need, I need to do what Hong said. I need to break down the dichotomy between head and heart. I'm really good on the head. I'm really crappy on the heart. Um, and, and start getting, helping my students experience this beautiful amazing place where we all go to school and 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 remember what we're fighting for because otherwise it all just becomes this intellectual thing and that's only a tiny part of the battle so thank you oh thank you thanks Dorit, for being with us and for all of your enthusiasm it, it's just it is it's as much a joy for us um, as well to be here with you all. So thank you so much. Um, all right, we're moving on. So we have one more minute. <laughs> and I know we're out of time. I just want to throw this slide up quickly just to give you a visual of, um, you know, this process. And we're borrowing this framework from, um, it's been adapted from uh, the work of Marshall Gantz at Harvard. But starting off this process, we really focused inward into our own personal experience, this experience of self and how we experience a, a refuge in the, in the physical world. And then, um, you know, kind of went out in this, the next concentric circle to us collectively as a, as a, as a writing group, as a mini community tonight. Um, and then the last step is to think about now, what are we going to do with this experience? And so I'd love for you to just jot a quick note down for yourself. Um, and to read, you just were getting at this in your final comment, which is a great segue. But what is your next step? You know, how does your experience tonight with this group or your experience with engaging with the climate crisis through your own writing, how does it kind of change your thoughts for your next step going forward? Um, what would you like to remember and or utilize with your students or with your educational community in the future? So I'll leave you with that question. Um, and I'm going to hand it back over to even and in, in, in David in just a moment. I wanted to just say very quickly, Claire mentioned this earlier, but we will be sending out an email to this group um, either at the end of this week or uh, very beginning of next week with um, teaching resources, classroom activities, um, very 
applicable to any age. So even if you, you know, even if you don't teach that 13 to 19 age bracket, which is our focus at Write the World, you know, look at these materials. These are prompts that we've done this kind of work with middle schoolers all the way up through graduate students and adults. So um, you can really tailor those resources to, to your own communities and to your own purposes. Um, and then the final thing that I'll mention is that Write the World is, um, uh, we are about to migrate in the next couple of weeks to a, a brand new and improved website. This is a year or two in the making. It's been a big, <laughs> a long journey. We're almost to the end of it. Um, but I would, if you are an educator and you're thinking about signing up for uh, an educator account at Write the World, um, which is free to create a private classroom group on the site, I would wait until that migration has already happened. Um, and we'll all send out a note to all of you and just let you know when we're ready to go so that you uh, have that timing down. Probably in about three weeks. Great. Thanks, David. All right, thank you all. Such a, a treat to be with you tonight. And um, please stay in touch. Our, our emails are in the chat and, and we would love to hear from you. Yeah, well, th thank you, uh, Liza and Claire and, and David and, and uh, all of you for being with us and, and participating in this uh, shared activity. Um, we will, um, even has uh, recorded this, uh, we will send out um, to each of you, um, hopefully within um, a little more than a week or maybe even less than a week, the recording of some of the uh, resources and comments that were in the chat. And um, we will, um, you know, we, 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 we want to keep working with you. And uh, if there's any way that we can help you in terms of engaging with uh, the Write the World uh, teach-in and with the other activities, we're, we're here as, as a community. So thank you all for the great work that you do. Thank you. David, thanks everyone. And get your bubbles on the map. Get your friends to put the bubbles on the map. <laughs> all bubbles. all the bubbles on the map at this point bubbles. in time. So we want those bubbles. <laughs> Have I made myself clear? You're, I know you're supposed to tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. So I just did that. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night.